Welcome back across Nevada. Thanks for sticking around. Mortgage defaults spiked nationwide in the first quarter of 2010. That's set for a decline a year ago. According to the credit rating agency Experian, 18% of the people who defaulted on their homes did it. Not because they could no longer afford the payments, but because it made good financial sense. In some places in Nevada, Las Vegas among them, two-thirds of homeowners owe more than their property is worth. Joining me now to talk about whether it's ever a good idea to walk away from a contractual obligation like a mortgage, Las Vegas attorney Tisha black -Shernin. She's seeing an inc increase in so-called strategic defaults in the residential and commercial markets. Also with us, Ian Hirsch of Fortress Credit Services. He helps Southern Nevadans negotiate with their mortgage holders. Thanks to both of you for coming on the program. Thanks for having us. So this sounds like kind of a strange thing, strategic default. It's even, it's even kind of a strange phrase where people actually use a strategy of defaulting on their mortgages. How prevalent is this here compared to na na nationwide? I think because Nevada's um, market, Nevada's, Nevada's residential market is so much more depressed than other markets across the nation, that it is more prevalent in our valley. I think it begins with the fact that the, the typical notion of home ownership, the paradigm of home, home ownership has changed from a chicken in every pot, you know, a picket fence, and you're going to raise your children in the home for 30 years. I think now it's more an investment opportunity. I think the phenomenon of strategic default in residential properties is somewhat new, but I think historically as an overall economic prospect in investing, which is what homes are considered now, it's not new at all. But it seems, I mean, the, the, the psychological impacts, I've I, I read about this, the moral and ethical questions people must have about just saying, you know what, I can't, I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm going to walk away. I mean, the thought process that people must go through to do something like this. Oh, it, it's definitely daunting. It's definitely daunting. But I think when you extrapolate into stage two, stage three from our present situation, if you have a homeowner or a borrower that's questioning whether he should pay money into a bad investment or perhaps put some of it in a 401k or an IRA, or an IRA and plan for his future, I think that the, the predominant choice of most people is going to be, you know what, I'm, this investment is a bad investment. And, and it's an obligation. It's not just an investment. You're walking away from something that you signed a piece of paper saying you were going to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, sanct the sanctity of a contract is, is of utmost importance. But when you're talking about performance under a contract and, and your welfare in the future, they weigh... That's what people are weighing when you're saying There's no that. game. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me ask you a question here, Mr. Uh, there have to be ripple effects. Uh, of this on the economy. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. people's credit rating must, goes down a, a, a huge percentage, right, yes. when they do something like that. So that's going to affect their ability to deal in the economy in other ways, won't it? Absolutely. It hurts their credit score. They can't buy a, a car. You know, a lot, oftentimes in order to get a loan modification, the banks are telling the client that you can't get a loan modification unless you're 60 days down. That's changed a little bit recently under some recent guidelines. But it's, it's, been the, it's been the case for almost three years. Unless you're past due, they won't give you a loan modification. Well, so the people stop making the payment. Then on their way to work one day, they get in a car accident. They go to a dealership to buy a new car to replace it. Then they lose their job. And then they're in a worse situation. The, the people that you're talking about, you know, you call them a homeowner. But do they own the home or does the home own them? If they owe 200, 300,000 more on the house, are they really a homeowner, or are they just renting with a, uh, a tax benefit? No, but th these are not just uh, penalty-free uh, transactions either. If you decide to do this, they can come back after you, right? And something called a deficiency judgment, right? Absolutely. And tell, tell, explain what that is. So, a, a, at, at any time in Nevada, uh, prior to October, we were a recourse state. So, and I think this compounds the problem for most people with the understanding is jurisdictionally the laws are different relating to defaults on mortgages. In Nevada, we're a recourse state or were before, for any loan before 2009. So that's the majority of the people right now, meaning that if you, when the bank takes back the property, okay, or if you don't pay the full amount due on the note, they can come after you for the deficient amount. And they can come after you in different ways. And I'm going to read to you something that was written about in, in the RJ last month. Uh, and, and just listen to what this bankruptcy attorney had to say. I hear lender attorneys say they'll put a clock of one or two years on the debt so the person can get a new job, get back on their feet. Then they'll start wage garnishment. Do you hear of cases like that? Yes, especially on second mortgages. Rarely on first mortgages. But uh, but it, it can happen. Uh, the statutes are different from the first mortgages and the second mortgage. She can tell you Depending more about on that. Foreclosure. If, if, 
the foreclosing lender, which is typically the first, has six months to come after the borrower from the date of the trustee's sale. Uh, the second, or the non-foreclosing lender in most instances, has up to six years. Yeah. So the game is, w what we're thinking the game is going to be, is that once people have had a chance to financially rehabilitate, if, they, if, they are, if, if the six years are still on balance on the second or on any deficiency, because in a short sale, which is very important, in a short sale, the six-year statute still runs. Well, well let, me, let me just ask a real quick question about 30 seconds left. We, we've done a lot of programs on this and there's a certain percentage of these loans that started out with some kind of collusion going on between the appraiser and lender, et, et, yeah. et cetera. And, and so how does that affect these? Well, you know, it, it has a lot of different effects. I mean, you know, the question I hear all the time from clients is, is about how did my house come down in value so much? And my answer is that it never went up to begin with. It was based on a Ponzi scheme that was created by the mortgage companies in a broad well, not sense. Not entirely. I mean, the economy I, was know, going well for a while. I, I think the, the, the real issue here is that real estate values, we're in a declining market. Real estate values have to reset. When you're in an investment property, which is your home, when you're in an investment and, and it's 50% upside down in value, you can't necessarily blame that on the bank. Right, right. But the real question is, if the bank doesn't do something to sort this out in a real way, maybe a reduction of principal or work with these borrowers, you're going to continue to see more foreclosures and you're going to continue to see more bankruptcies so that people can get away from these deficiencies. And, and then you have a real risk of a double bubble. We're, we're out of time. I'm sorry. I know, I know yeah. you want to jump, but we are out of time. We'll see how it resets. We'll have you back, and we'll talk, we'll talk about it again, okay? Thank you so Thanks much. for coming on the program. And when we come back, we're going to read some viewer feedback on the air, and I'm going to reveal that secret. Stick around. If you want to know something you wouldn't believe about John Rawlson, back in a moment. <laughs>